For 30 years I've been teaching this, and I've, I've taught this for West Point and Microsoft and Lilly and Delta and, and, and the largest organizations and, and companies in the world come and say, John, teach the five levels of leadership because they understand, they understand that if you and I today in these few minutes can understand how leadership works, and by the way, leadership's not a noun, it's a verb. It's action, it's moving. And, and if we can understand how to go from level one to level two to level three to level four to up, to up to level five in our leadership, we expand our leadership, we expand our influence, and we expand our effectiveness. So I'm ready to go. I know you're ready to go. Okay, here we go. Level one. We're going to start at the very bottom level. This is where you start. This is where we all start. The bottom level is the position level. At level number one, this is where we all start. We all start with a title. We all start with a job description. We all start with a position. Okay? And the key word at level number word, not level number one, the key word is rights, R-I-G-H-T-S, rights. In other words, people at level number one follow you because they have to. In other words, you're the boss, or you have a title, or you're the supervisor, and, and anybody that's under that person, they just basically follow that person. Now, this is the beginning of all of our leadership journey. We, we get a leadership position. In fact, people will come to me all the time, they'll say, John, I... I just became a leader last week. And, and, and when they tell me they became a leader last week, I know what they meant. They really didn't become a leader last week. What they really did is they got a leadership position last week. And by the way, the position doesn't make you a leader. I know a lot of people who have a position of leadership, but they're not a good leader. You know that too. You probably worked with them before. So the position doesn't make you a leader, but if you're a good leader, you can really make the position. But it's where we all begin. Now, the upside of level one is simple. It's a place where you and I get to shape and define our leadership. We get a leadership job, we become a supervisor, and now we begin to work on ourselves as a leader, and we begin to define who we are. That's kind of the upside. Now, let me give you the downside of level number one. The downside of level number one is the people who follow you will give you the least amount of their energy and effort. In other words, if they're following you because they have to follow you, if they're following you because that, that's what they've got to do to get their paycheck, if they're following you because that, you, know, that's, you have the position over them, if that's the case, they will always give you the very least of their time and of their ability and of their effort and of their mind. People don't like to have to follow people because they have to follow people. And this is a great mistake that people that have positional leadership make. They think, well, I've got the title, I've got the position, so now everybody will follow me. Well, they're following you, but they're only following you many times if you're not a good leader because they have to. It's the only way that they can get paid. Just think of this. Level number one is where you're going to get the very least of people's energy, effort, and mind. Let, let, let me tell you, I, I've seen it many times when I've gone to, to work with companies on leadership. You can always tell a, a, a level one leadership company or a level number one leadership culture. You can always tell it because let's say quitting time is at, 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 quitting time's at five o'clock. In level one positional type companies, if, if quitting time is at five o'clock, guess what? At 4.30, everybody is clearing the desk. Oh, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're moving stuff out of the way Be because, because it's only 30 minutes until the highlight of their day. And, and so they're, they're already starting the countdown. So they're, they're clearing their desks because they want nothing to impede their progress when they leave the building. So they've got the, at, at 4.30, the desk starts getting cleared. At, at 4.45, they get away from the desk and they go around and they go to the different cubicles and, they, and they're saying their goodbyes. And they're saying, boy, it was great to be with you today and had a good time and see you tomorrow. And they're doing all that kind of stuff because, again, at 5 o'clock, the big time, at 5 o'clock, they don't want to have to be encumbered by, by doing relationship stuff. They, would, they want to do that on company time. You understand that. At 4.50, they're going to the restroom. Of course. You, you want to be sure to pee on company time. Of, of course. So, so, so they're over there and they're, rest, they're just, okay, now they, they've got that done. And, oh, at 4.55, they're back at their desk and, and they're changing shoes. They're changing their shoes. They're, they're getting on track shoes. They're getting on, they, they got to get something because at 4.57, they are in a, 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 they are in a starting position. They are, they are counting down. They are, and at 5 o'clock, 
Everybody's gone. I mean, everybody, you say, what do you mean everybody's gone? Everybody's gone. At 5 o'clock, they're all gone. I mean, you look around the office and they're gone. In fact, they're gone so fast, it startles you. And, and you, you, run over, you run over to the window to look out in the parking lot, and you're now you're, you're totally shocked. They're, all the cars are gone. And you ask yourself, how could people leave a building so fast without a fire drill? Let me explain. In positional companies, when people come and park in the morning, they're very careful how they park. They back their car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they back their car in <laughs> because, because they know at quitting time they want to be able to get a fast escape because now they're on their time. And I can promise you, you show me a positional company, a positional comp culture, you show me leaders that are positional in their thinking, and I will promise you every time, not all the time, every time those people will constantly wonder, why am I not getting the best out of my people? Well, you're not getting the best out of your people because the only reason that people are following you is because you got a title. And they're going to give you very little energy. Now, the good news is you don't have to stay at level number one. You can go to level number two. So let's go to level number two as quickly as we can. The first level is the positional level. The key word there is rights. I get certain rights, so you've got to follow me. Level number two is the permission level. And at the permission level, the key word is relationships. And at this level, people now begin to follow you because they want to. Now, there's a world of difference between following somebody because you have to and following somebody because you want to. Now, what happened between levels one and two? Well, what's happened is you have connected, you've connected with your people. You've not only connected with them, but, but relationally, they like you and you like them and you've got to know each other. And so now in this work environment, they're not following you just because you are a supervisor. They're, they're following you because you, you do have a position. You are a supervisor, but you are a supervisor that people like. And I'm always amazed. Aren't you amazed? I'm always amazed at people that have leadership positions or responsibilities and they're not, they're not likable. Do you know what I mean? They're just not likable. People don't care for them. It's, it's tough being in the people business and not having people like you. It's tough. In, fa in fact, sometimes I see them and I just want to, I just want to, I just want to sit down with them and, and, and say, my name is John and, and I'm your friend. And I just want you to know, pe people don't like you. <laughs> how many, oh, come on, let, let's just have some fun. How many of you have ever had somebody you had, how many of you ever had somebody you worked for that you just, that you just didn't like? And, and no, no, wait, 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 not in your present job situation. <laughs> you, you understand. No, 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 no. I know that is not happening where you are now. You are happy. But how many of you in another job at another time on another planet? Come on, come on. All right, come on. How many of you ever had somebody you had to follow and they just weren't like, let's see the hands. Come on, let's get those hands. Uh -huh. yeah, absolutely. All right, there you are. All right, let me ask the real question. How many of you are seating beside that person right now? Relationships, relationships with people are the foundation of leadership. You build your leadership off of relationships. Why? Because leadership is influence. And you cannot influence somebody that you antagonize. And every one of us know what it's like to have somebody. Every one of us know what it's like to have somebody that, that, that we, <sighs> that's hard to like. Well, let me ask it this way. How many of you, how many of you have ever, um, how many of you ever been in a grocery store and, and you looked over about three aisles and you saw somebody you didn't want to see? And how many of you ever done, and the, the good news is, the bad news is you saw somebody you didn't want to see. The good news is they didn't see you. How, how many of you ever done this number? Huh? Hit, hit, hit from somebody. 
Now, now in this, on level number two, what happens is you begin to develop relationship skills. And let me just, let me describe the leader on level two. Uh, the leader on level two, they have three things that they do extremely well to be a relational leader. One is they listen well. In fact, they take all of their leadership cues from walking slowly through the crowd and listening. They listen well. Secondly, they observe. They're conscious about where their people are and what their people are doing, and they're constantly observing them. And thirdly, they're learning. They're learning. And then in the process of listening, observing, and learning, they have an attitude of servanthood. They know how to serve. And they not only know how to serve, but they do serve. And they not only do serve, but they love to serve. One of the things that I love about Chick-fil-A, I live in Florida now, and so when I went down there, I, I began to talk to Chick-fil-A people, said, come on, you got to get a whole bunch of Chick-fil-A's down in my area because I lived in Atlanta and I need my Chick-fil-A fix and they're starting to come down and it's wonderful. But can I tell you what I love about Chick-fil-A? They have a, a servant culture. Level number two, they got that wired. They've got this relationship stuff wired. It's my pleasure. How can I serve you? It's, it's, it's a mindset. It's a culture. And, and, and if you're going to grow as a leader, you have to grow beyond your position, beyond your title. Yes, you have a position. That's level one. But the second level is relationships and the ability to get along with people. That's level two. Let's go to level number three. There's another level higher. The third level is the production level. The key word there is results. And at this level, you're starting to help the bottom line of the company. You're, you're starting to, quote, bring home the bacon. You're, at, at, at this level, you become effective as a leader, and you become effective as a leader on level number three because you produce. And the characteristics of leaders at level number three are, 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 are very common. One is that they, they produce by example. In other words, they are the example for the other people that follow them how to be effective and how to be, how to be productive. You see, the greatest motivational principle in the world, the greatest motivational principle in the world is that people do what people see. And, and, and too, many, too many travel agents, too many travel agents, they're, they're like, um, or too many leaders, too many leaders are like, they're like travel agents. They're sending people where they've never been themselves. And you want to be a tour guide. You want to take people with you. You want to say, this is the area where I've been, this is the area where I live, this is the area where I lead, come along and, 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 and follow me. And at level number three, your leadership begins to gain credibility because now you are fleshing out for the people around you and you are modeling for them things that they want to see and you are starting to produce, which something else happens because you're becoming productive in your own life. You begin to attract people that begin to be productive also. In the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership that I wrote, one of the laws is the law of magnetism, and the law of magnetism just says we attract who we are, not who we want. So when I talk to leaders, often when we talk about recruiting, then I'll say, well, what kind of people do you want in your company? What kind of people do you want in your department as a supervisor? And they'll give me a list. They'll, they'll, they'll write things, you know, I want, I want somebody that's, um, that's self-disciplined, and I want somebody that is, is service-oriented, and, and they'll give me a, 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 you know, a list of four or five qualities. And as soon as they give me the list, I look, I look at those qualities, and, and then I ask them a very simple question. I, I, I say, okay, are, do you possess those qualities? Because see, on level number three, basically who you are as a leader is who you attract on your team. And at level number two, or level number three, what is wonderful is that, that at level number three, when you start to produce, when you start to really develop, and when, when you really start to grow things, you begin to get momentum, and momentum is a leader's best friend because momentum is the great exaggerator. And once you have momentum, all of a sudden things begin to look in such a better way, and, and, and it becomes easier to grow, and it becomes easier to lead. It's a wonderful thing. In fact, level number three is where a lot of the problem solving is taken care of. You see, managers, they try to solve problems where leaders try to create momentum because leaders know that if they create momentum, they'll solve 80% of their problems with momentum. You see, momentum is a problem solver. Lack of momentum is a problem stopper every time. A train going 55 miles an hour on a track 
if you had a five foot thick concrete steel reinforced wall on the track in front of that train, because that train is going and has momentum going 55 miles an hour, that train would smash through that wall and would just keep on going. Why? Because it has momentum. Momentum allowed it to get through a five foot thick concrete steel reinforced problem. That's what momentum does. That same train, not moving at all, stopped dead on the track. No momentum. If you put a one inch block in front of the driving wheels of that train, just a one inch block, that train can't even get started. Now, isn't it interesting? Same train that, that smashed through a five foot thick concrete steel reinforced wall because it had momentum, that same train without momentum can't even get going with a one inch block, can't even get going. It has no momentum. In fact, that's why, that's why I tell people many times that when they look at the problems they have in their organization, your, your problem is not your problem. The problem is, they think the problem is the problem, and, and so therefore they, they concentrate on a problem that's not a problem, and now that the problem it isn't a problem has become a problem, not because it was a problem, but the problem was they didn't know it wasn't a problem, and so now they're concentrating on a problem that wasn't a problem, and now they've got a problem, not because they had a problem, but the problem has become a problem because they didn't know that it wasn't a problem, and so they got a problem. And momentum and level three leadership will take care of 80% of all the problems in an organization. It happens for sports, it happens for business, it happens in government. Momentum is a leader's best friend. It happens at level number three. You got to get to level number three to get that mo going. Okay, let's go to level number four. Let me go, let me ask you a question before we go to level number four. Are, are, are you learning something? Are you learning something? Uh, okay, okay, look at your neighbor and say, I'm learning something. Go ahead and tell them that. Go ahead and tell them that. I'm learning something. Look, look, look back, look back at your, look back at your, look back at your neighbor, look back at your neighbor and say, not enough yet. <laughs> you, you still got two levels to go. You, you're, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. Level number four is the people development level. This is what I live for. This is what I strive for. This is what excites me. Something magical happens. When you begin to understand the most appreciable asset you have in any organization is the people of that organization. And you begin to commit yourself to developing the people within that organization because how do you grow a company? You grow a company by growing people. And when you grow them, they increase their capacity. When they increase their capacity, they begin to increase the capacity of what you can do and what you can accomplish. Let me just share with you quickly. Three thoughts on developing people, just very quickly. Number one is the key to developing leaders, and the, the key to developing good people is in recruitment. Uh, the better person you bring in the door, the higher odds you can do well with them. I remember having lunch one time with Lou Holtz, and Lou Holtz said, John, I, I, I've had bad players on my football team, and I've had good players on my football team. And he said, just to be honest with you, I, I, I'm a better coach with good players. <laughs> of course he is. Of course he is. Let me, let me say something. 80% of your success of equipping people to be successful is in the front door on who you bring in. I wish I had time to develop that for you because what happens is unless you and I have a clear picture of what we're looking for, we don't know when we see it. Happens all the time. People come to me and say, John, I'm looking for some leaders for my company. What do you suggest? The first question I ask is what, what does a leader look like? Give me the characteristics. Give me the qualities. Uh, please, please paint a picture for me. What does that leader look like? Because you've got to have that clear picture so that when you see that person, you know that they're one that you want. Recruitment is key. Number two is positioning. The ability not only to bring the right person in the, right, in, in the, in the front door, but also to put him in the right place, as Collins would say, get him on the bus, get him on the right seat. And, and position is huge. And what I've discovered is that successful people have always positioned them well, I mean, themselves well. When you see a successful person, they're successful because what they have done is they've found their strength zone and they've found their niche and they stay right in that sweet spot and, and they just work that sweet spot. You've never heard anybody be in an interview that was successful that you came up and you interviewed and they said, well, the secret of my success is that I've never discovered what I was good at. Or the senior of my successes, I've always worked on, I've just, I've just worked in my weakness. No, no, they're always in their strength. They always, they've already discovered what they're good at. Now, successful people have discovered what they're good at. Successful leaders 
discover what other people are good at. Successful people position themselves well. Successful leader position the other people well. And at level number four, that's exactly what happened. The leader is always looking at the people, observing, watching. Just like last week, I went back to my, my first school. I graduated, I graduated from Ohio Christian University in a, in a little town in Circleville, Ohio. And, and it's a little school, and I go back every year, and I give them a day to, to, to speak, and, and they get all the proceeds and keep, keep the money. And, and so because I grew up in that town, I, I told one of my friends that played ball with me, Tim, I said, Tim, uh, let the ball players, let, let the team know, let some of my high school kids know that I'm going to be in town, and, and, and let's have a dinner afterwards. And we had over 50 people came together. I hadn't seen many of these, hadn't seen many of my high school mates since I graduated from high school, clear back in 1965. And we had a wonderful time. We laughed and talked and told stories for two hours. And, and Coach Neff, our basketball coach, he came back. I hadn't seen him for years. And when I saw him, I thought of myself, and I thought of back in those scrimmages in basketball, because the first scrimmage every year, Coach Neff would take the first team, and he'd say, now I'm going to let you play the second team, but there's one condition. The first team is not going to play their position. And he'd take Doug Roth, who was six foot eight, and put him out at point guard. I remember he stuck me one year under, the, uh, uh, under center, and, and he put all the first team players out of position on offense, but he let the second team play in their position. And the second team always beat us in the scrimmage. Why'd they always beat us? Because, and then he would stop and he'd say, let me just explain something to you. No matter how talented you are, if you're out of position, you'll never reach your potential. What was Coach Neff teaching us? He was coaching us, and he was teaching us that it's key to get positionally correct. And it's also, as a leader, key to get your people in the right position. And at level number four, that's what happens. At level number four, you recruit well, you position well, and then you equip well. Now you take them and say, okay, I understand what their strength zone is. I, I understand what their giftedness is. Now I'm going, I'm going to equip them. I'm going to come alongside of them, and I'm going to develop them, and I'm going to train them. And I use a very simple, for years, for many, many years, a simple five-step equipping process. It really works. Step one, I do it. It's that simple. You can't teach somebody what you can't do yourself. We may teach what we know, but we reproduce what we are. So if you're going to reproduce yourself, you've got to be it yourself. So the first step is, is I do it. Step two is I do it and you're with me. I take you with me. Now we're going to spend time together. I'm going to be your mentor. I'm going to be your coach. You're going to watch me. You're going to observe me. You're going to see me in different situations. We're going to make sure that it works. We're going to make sure you're going to be able to ask me questions. Step three is now, now we turn it and I hand, I hand the ball off to you. Now on step three, you do it. You do it and I'm with you. Now I'm watching you and I'm, I'm tweaking you and, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, 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 I'm helping you to get better and I, I'm, 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 I'm just really fine tuning you. Step four is you do it. You just do it. You don't need me anymore. You know how to do it. You do it and you do it well. And many times people think that equipping stops at, at, at step four, but it doesn't. There's one more step that's absolutely essential. Step five is, is is you do it and somebody's with you. You've never really trained and equipped somebody until they can multiply themselves. That's where all compounding is. That's where all compounding of time, money, influence, the whole process. Compounding begins when you can train somebody who has trained somebody. I know that well because 14 years ago, I started a nonprofit organization called Equip that is now the largest leadership organization in the world. And we've trained and equipped over 3 million people in 154 countries. And the key to that is we don't train anybody unless they make a commitment to train somebody else. It has to continue to go on. That's level number four. It's a beautiful level to be on. It's the level where you develop people. Now there's one more level. That's level number five. The pinnacle level. The pinnacle level, the key word there is respect. You've done it so well with so many for so long that people just absolutely follow you. They follow you because of who you are, the qualities you have in your life. They follow you because of what you have done. And there's a great amount of respect and it takes a long time to get to level number five. Most of us aren't there. All of us would probably like to be there, but it's a lifeline journey. And what I want you to understand about the five levels is that's exactly what leadership is. Leadership is an always ongoing, always learning, growing 
process. Okay, let me ask you a question. You've got the five levels there, and you can see them, and you can see how each one kind of leads into the next one. And probably the question you've asked yourself now by this time, because you're a sharp crowd, you've asked yourself, wonder what level I'm on. Am I on level one or am I on level three? Am I on level four? You've already done that. I know you have. That's what I would be doing if I'd be sitting there. I'd be saying, okay, where, where are you, Maxwell? And if you ask that question and you kind of go deep in that question, you're going to get a little frustrated because you know what you're going to discover? You're going to discover you're, that you're not on the same level with everybody. That with somebody, you're maybe on level two. With somebody else, you may be on level four. Isn't that true? If somebody new came in the company, you're on level one with them. And what you're going to discover is that you're on different levels with different people. Now, I wish I had an hour to teach this whole process, but here's what I want you to understand. Here's your assignment, very simple. Take the people that you lead, put their names down, and ask yourself a simple question. What level am I on with that person? Do your best to kind of put a number there, and, and I know it can kind of bleed together, so it's not quite an exact science, but, but do your best shot. Because after you know what level you're on with each one of your people, then you're going to know specifically how to lead them. Now, here's the key. Whenever you try to cast vision with people in your organization, in your department, they don't see you based upon who you are as a person or as a leader. They see you through the five levels grid. And a person on level one, when you talk about a vision, a person on level one sees you entirely different than a person on level number four. The commitment level is much higher the higher you go with your people. So, therefore, when you cast a vision or when you lay it out for your people and say, this is where we want to go, just understand it may be the same company, it may be in the same building, it may be the same time, it may be the same speech, but the reactions are going to be different, and the reactions are going to be different because they're on different levels with you. So, take the notes, study them, apply them to your life, begin to be a student of the five levels of leadership, and I wish you well. Because leadership is influence, always has been, always will be. And within you, you have the power to increase that influence. God bless. Thank you very much. Have a great day.